So the Bible says be intoxicated with God. I mean, we've got to come to a point to where the greatest, and I don't want to sound churchy when I say this, but we've got to come to a point to where the greatest influence in our lives is the Holy Spirit. The prophet Isaiah in 511, he says, Woe to those who rise early in the morning to run after their drinks, who stay up late at night till they are inflamed with wine. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 3 says, you've spent enough time in the past doing what pagans have done. He says, they choose to live their lives in lust and, and in detestable idolatry. And so the base point of this message is not whether you drink or not. It's instead live a life filled with the Holy Spirit. So how does one do this? Be close. To the source. Know God so that God can get inside of you. I know I don't have any, any, any Memphis folk. Anybody here from Mississippi? Yeah. I used to hear folk in Mississippi singing something inside of me telling me to go ahead. Live so God can, can, can get inside of you. A little boy asked his mama, he said, Mama, where is God? And she says, he's inside of you. He said, Mama, how big is God? She said, real big. He said, Mama, is God this big? She I may have told you this. Mama, is God this big? She says, bigger. Mama, is God this big? She says, bigger. He said, Mama, is God this big? She said, bigger. She said, Mama, he said, Mama, where is God? He said, inside you. He said, Mama, if God is in me and he's this big, he's going to stick out. <laughs> Do you know what? If God is in you, if God is in you, He's going to stick out. You have to tell somebody where he is. If God is in you, he's going to stick out. Be intoxicated with God. In other words, lose control of yourself to the Holy Spirit. Remember that song, Use Me, Lord, in Your Service? So he's intoxicated with God. But not only is the Spirit-filled believer intoxicated God, with God, he has a heart for worship. Verse 19 says, speak to one another with psalms, with hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Now I got to tell you now, it just hadn't been hard to praise God here today. It just hasn't been hard to praise God in Allen Temple today. But I want y'all to know something. It ain't hard for me to praise God in church anyway. Because until you get a song in your heart, singing ain't singing until the singing gets in your heart. Make music in your heart. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. There's a God somewhere. Worship, worship has become, has become one of the most controversial issues in all of our churches. Singing traditional hymns. That's why we got so many different names for our churches now. It's all about the worship. And so now we've split our churches. We've split our conventions. We've split organizations over the worship. When worship has become, it's so controversial. And Paul wrote this passage. The Holy, when Paul wrote this, this passage, the Holy Spirit had given him insight on what divides us even today. And he writes about it. It seems Paul says, he says, one tradition for those folk who like it the traditional way in the church. I got news for you. Paul says the traditional way of worship is right. That's what he says. 
How many of you like a tradition? I'm just an old traditional Baptist preacher. I'm sorry, but I'm just an old traditional Baptist preacher. I don't care what my son say. I'm just an old traditional Baptist preacher. And I'm not ashamed of it now because Paul says it's right. He says, sing him. And he says, sing psalms. Sing psalms and sing hymns. Hymns and, and psalms are kind of slow and easy. And there are some folk in the church. And look, y'all, it sounds a little funny, but, but little stuff has caused big problems in our churches. I'm going to join me at church where they do praise and worship. And then folk fight for that. Paul says the traditional way is right. But you read on. Paul says for those of you who just got to have a clap. Some folk in the church are not the slow folk. Some folk got to have a clap. Some folk got to have a stop. Some folk got to move. Some folk got to shake. And Paul says, that's what you call contemporary. Paul says, for those of you who are contemporary worship lovers, he says, you're right. You're right. And he says, for you sing spiritual songs. You know, spiritual songs. And so good worship ought to be like Alan Temple has been today. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Because unity has left our church because we fight over small stuff. So the spirit-filled believer must be intoxicated with God, must have a heart for worship. Now, they all not have to, I don't care how we do it, folk all not have to pump you up. And some folk look like, look like, look like, look like my granddaddy had a well. And you go to the well, and before the water come up, you just got to pump the well. Some folk come to church like you just got to be pumped. You just got to be pumped. God woke you up this morning, and you still got to be pumped. God healed your body, and you still got to be pumped. I mean... Gas is four dollars. It's high in Oakland than I've seen anywhere in the country. On the northeast part of the, it, gas is higher here than I've seen it anywhere else, and I've been everywhere. And y'all got a full tank of gas out there in them cars that's sitting out there, and somebody got to pump you up. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see no but I didn't see no whole bunch of folk carpooling this morning. Here folk come riding up here in the Mercedes with a tank full of gas, and then somebody come up with a Pontiac gas, car full of gas, and come into church, and somebody got to pump you up. <laughs> somebody here been in the hospital this week, been to the emergency room this week, been to urgent care this week, been to the courthouse this week, been to the jailhouse this week, and, and you get here, and somebody got to pump you up. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you for the victory. Tell your neighbor he's been good to me. Shake your neighbor's hand. I said, shake your neighbor's hand. Tell your neighbor, God's been good to me. God's been good to me. Before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Anybody know he's been good? Anybody know he's been good? Ain't he been good? Yeah. I want to hold you long. 